Hello everyone, I hope you'll be doing all good. So now we have to start off with our next topic that is about the electrical quantities. This is topic number 4.2 according to your latest specifications. Uh, the name of the topic is electrical quantities. In this topic we will discuss about the conductors, insulators, current, potential difference or voltage and resistance. Electrical quantities. There you go. Okay, so we'll start our discussion by discussing the type of charges. So, as we know that there are two types of charges. One is positive charge, other one is negative charge. So we have to discuss the properties of these charges. So, the positive charge and negative charge, if you have two charges, positive charge and the negative charge, they will be attracted towards each other. And if we have the same charges, let's suppose we have a post, we have two positive charges in front of each other, of course they'll repel each other. And if we have two negative charges in front of each other, they'll also rebel. It's basic, just the basic phenomena. So we can say that the like charges, they repel each other and the unlike charges attract each other. So from the introduction of charges, we have to dis we have to we have to say that the like charges like charges means positive positive or negative negative so the like charges repel each other and the unlike charges attract each other unlike charges attract each other for example Positive and negative charges, they will attract each other. Positive, positive charges and negative, negative charges, they will repel each other. So that's the basic phenomena of the charges. Now we have to discuss about uh, the force by which these charges are attracted towards each other or repelled by each other. The name of that force is electrostatic force. Electrostatic force. So if the charges are being attracted towards each other, so we'll call that the electric electrostatic force of attraction if the charges are being repelled from each other we will call that force as the electric electrostatic force of repulsion all right now we will discuss how the charges are moved from one object to another object okay how the charge flows so the charges they flow from one object to another by one phenomena and that phenomena is friction so the charge flows from one object to another with friction for example if we have an insulated rod and we rub this insulated rod on a piece of cloth let's suppose this is the piece of cloth so what will happen let's suppose on this road there are 100 positive charges and 100 negative charges which means that initially this road is neutral neutral means an object will be neutral if it has equal number of positive and negative charges okay and also let's suppose this cloth it also has 100 positive charges and 100 negative charges okay we can say that initially these two objects are neutral the piece of cloth and the iron uh, iron rod or any any glass rod basically not the iron rod glass rod. we are talking about the insulators here i'll explain you in uh, detail later so they have 100 positive charges and 100 negative charges this cloth piece also has 100 positive charges and 100 negative charges so when we rub this glass rod on this uh, piece of cloth what will happen some charges will be transferred from this uh, glass rod to the cloth when I say charges it means some electrons will be transferred so after rubbing the electrons will become for example um, this glass rod after rubbing will have 100 positive charges and let's suppose 90 negative charges so you see it has the deficiency of negative charges which means as a result of that this rod will become positively charged okay Similarly, on this cloth, 
there were 100 positive charges and 100 negative charges now since 10 negative 10 negative charges have been transferred from the rod to the cloth so this cloth has 100 positive charges but 110 negative charges due to which it will have negative charge on it so that's the phenomenon of friction by which the charges move from one object to another okay and uh, this happens due to the friction okay now we have to discuss about electric field okay electric field what is an electric field so electric field if you, if i define the electric field i can say that it is a region or space it is a region or space where a charge experiences some electric force some electric force it could be electric force uh, it could be um, electrostatic force of attraction or the electrostatic force of repulsion so that region is called the field for example I have a positive charge and the range of this positive charge is till here okay so if I place some um, negative charge over here at this point then they, these two charges will attract each other okay so this region where this positive charge has its influence this region is called the electric field right so if I place a positive charge over here let's suppose the range of the influence of this positive charge is within this circle so this circle the region this region is called the electric field where I will put any charge and that charge will experience uh, will experience the electric electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion depending upon the nature of the charge for example if I put a positive charge over here it will be repelled and if I put a negative charge over here it will be attracted towards this positive charge so that's the simple phenomenon okay so that's the concept of the electric field um yeah that's it now we have to discuss okay this is the electric field due to a point charge this is the this is considered to be a point charge so that's the example of the electrostatic electric field due to a point charge i'll uh, just mark it up so you'll remember that because it's in, in your specification so electric field due to a point charge due to a point charge okay so that's the example of electric field due to a point charge now we will have to discuss the example of an electric field due to a charged conducting sphere okay there's a difference between them this positive charge is just considered to be a point charge it means it has a negligible radius in fact it has no radius it, it's just a point charge now we have to discuss the charge around a sphere so I'll draw a sphere first of all let's suppose this is the sphere let me just draw it let's suppose this is a sphere okay and uh, it has a positive charge on it on the surface of the sphere there's a positive charge there you go now you have to remember that we are talking about the positively charged or any charged sphere so in this case we have the positive charge is spreaded on the sphere but you know what there is nothing inside the sphere there is nothing inside the sphere so if you put a point charge let's suppose if you put an electron over here nothing will happen to this electron there is no force of attraction or repulsion so that's the difference between a point charge and the charge in a sphere although if you put a, an electron over here at this position then you will see a, an electrostatic force of attraction and if you put a positive charge 
near to this uh, sphere you will experience the electrostatic force of repulsion all right so that's how the um, we can explain the electric field around a positively charged sphere the only difference between the point charge and the and the sphere is that in the point charge the radius is zero and in a charge conducting sphere there is some radius but within the sphere there is no charge there is no electric field in fact we can if we place a charge over here it will not be affected by any electric field so the electric field strength over here is zero which means there is no electric field in between them now the next example that we have to discuss about the electric field is about the electric field in the charged parallel conducting plates okay so i'll just write it over here electric field between charged conducting plates conducting plates okay so if you place two plates for example that's one plate here's another plate now there's a positive charge on this plate and there is negative charge on this plate now the question is how that positive and negative charge will come onto this plate it means like we can explain it like this that this positive plate is connected to a battery the positive terminal of the battery and this negative plate is connected with the negative terminal of the battery that's the positive terminal that's the negative terminal in any in every battery there are two terminals positive terminal and the negative terminal so this positive plate since it is connected with the positive terminal of the battery so it has positive charge on it and this plate since it has been connected with negative terminal of the battery so it has negative charge on it okay so that's how these plates will become positive and negative charges charged now we have to check the direction of the electric field between these two conducting charged plates so in order to show that we have to draw some arrows so on the edges of these uh, conducting charged plates we will see the direction of the electric field from the positive plate towards the negative plate okay and within these uh, within these conducting plates now within these conducting plates it will be straight like that so that's the direction of the electric field between these two conducting plates there you go okay now i'll just draw them the arrows in order to represent the direction of the electric field so when there are two charged conducting plates the direction of the electric field is from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery all right so these are the this these are the three examples of the electric field due to first of all we have discussed about the uh, and about the electric field due to point charge then the uh, charged conducting sphere and thirdly we have explained it between the two conducting positive between the two conduct think charged plates one is positive and the other one is negative now one thing that you have to note down over here is the strength of the electric field in this whole region will be constant for example strength means the electric force for example if i place an electron over here 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 at like random places so the the force the electric force that will be exerted on these electrons will be same in all places okay the force acting on these electrons will be same at all uh, the strength of the electric force will be same why because these electric field lines are at equal distances from each other these are the parallel straight lines they are at the equal distances from each other since they are at, since they are um at uniform distances from each other it means the electric force is constant the force that is being acting on the charge is constant okay that's very important point that you have to keep in mind now we have to discuss about the conductors and the insulators and then uh, we will 
we will differentiate between we will discuss an experiment by which we will differentiate between the conductors and the insulators okay so conductors and the insulators conductors and insulators so it's quite simple conductors are the objects through which electricity uh, through which the current can pass or the charges can flow but the insulators are the objects through which the current cannot pass that's the only difference between the conductors and the insulators so the objects through which current passes are the conductors and insulators are the ones the objects through which um, current does not pass are the insulators also it uh, this rule also applies on the heat so the object through which heat passes they are normally the conductors and the objects through which the heat does not pass they are the insulators but since uh, we are talking about the electricity in this topic over here so i'll only um, consider electricity okay now let's design an experiment through which we will identify which object is a conductor and which object is not a conductor so for that purpose i'll just draw a simple circuit and uh, for example this is the there's a light bulb all right i hope you won't mind my, or you won't mind my drawing okay so this is the bulb it is connected with a battery okay so the battery is here that's the positive terminal that's the negative terminal positive terminal negative terminal it is connected with the battery the negative terminal positive terminal now i leave some space over here so let's suppose I have uh, this is my conductor and this object is my insulator. So first of all, I'll attach my conductor and check what happens. Okay, I'll place my conductor over here. This is my conductor. I'll connect this conductor with a wire from one end and the other wire from another end. And in this case, the bulb will glow the bulb will glow okay so from here i have seen that the current is being passed through this conductor so the bulb is glowing so it means this is a conductor now i have to check the insulator so i'll remove it and uh, i'll attach that insulator all right so i'll attach this insulator now what will happen the bulb will not glow which means the current is not being passed through this insulator simple it's that much simple which means this object is an insulator because the current is not being passed through it and the bulb is not glowing so that's how we'll just design a simple experiment to ex to differentiate between an object whether it's a conductor or an insulator okay so that was the introductory part of uh, topic 4.2 so now we have to discuss about the concept of electrical current so that is exactly topic 4.2.2 and it's about the electrical current so we'll discuss its definition first of all and then we'll discuss its unit direction and everything related to it related to it so electric current um if you define the electric current electric current is basically it is uh, the flow of charges per unit time the flow of charges per unit time is called electrical is called 
electric current how fast the charges are flowing through any object in one second is defined defines its elect defines the electric current for example um okay i'll just write down the formula for uh, for you so electric current is equal to the charge divided by the time and the unit of the electric current is ampere we present it with capital a the unit of charge is coulomb we represent it with capital c and the unit of time will be seconds and it is represented with s okay and the symbol that we use for current is i so it'll be like i equals to q over t q is the symbol that is being used for the charge and t is the symbol that is used for the time so electrical current is basically it is the flow of charges per unit time how the faster the charge flows through an object the more will be the current and the slower the charges will move through an object the slower the lesser will be the current but remember one thing the electrical current can only pass through the conductor the, uh, it does not passes through the it does not pass through the insulators okay so i'll write the point over here it only passes through the conductors like the metal objects or you can say graphite as well and it does not pass through the insulators through the insulators you have to keep that in mind okay now we have to discuss about uh, the direction of current remember i drew a figure before uh, of a bulb and uh, a battery that is connected to the bulb so now we have to discuss the direction of the current and then we will discuss how can we measure the current so let's suppose this is the battery that's the positive terminal negative terminal positive terminal negative terminal and this battery is connected to a switch this is the symbol of the switch and then it is connected to a light bulb so this is the symbol for the light bulb i'm just using the symbols i'm not drawing the exact um, bulb so this is the symbol for the light bulb and here you go these are these are connected with the wires so right now this switch is open which means no current is being flown through the circuit when we will close this switch then what will happen the current will start to flow from the positive terminal of the battery all the way through the bulb towards the negative terminal of the battery so this will be the direction of the current that you have to keep in mind the current always flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery i'll write it over here um it flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal so that's the direction of the current okay now we have to discuss um okay how the current flows basically so the current flows due to the motion of electrons okay the current flows due to the motion of electrons but the question is electrons are negatively charged then how come they flow from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal it's not like that the electrons flow from the negative terminal because they are they are repelled by this negative terminal so the flow of electron is from the negative terminal of the battery towards the positive terminal like that this is the flow of electron but over here we are not discussing the flow of electrons we are discussing the direction of the current so the direction of current is opposite to the flow of electron that is called the conventional current 
um, before it was assumed, before it was discovered that the current flows due to the electrons, everyone assumed that the current flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery. And when it was discovered that the current flows due to the flow of the electrons, then it did not change any uh, outcomes. So uh, the scientists kept the direction of the current from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery because it does not make any difference. So you have to keep in mind that the current always flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery, period. Okay, now we have to discuss about the device that is used to measure the current. Like how can we measure the current? So the device that is used to measure the current is called ammeter. So if I attach the ammeter in this uh, circuit, I'll just draw a circle over here and write a, a for ammeter. And I'll just connect it like that. So this is how we connect the ammeter in, in the circuit. And this device is used to measure the electrical current. Okay. So ammeter is attached in series. This is the series attachment. Okay. That's the series attachment of uh, ammeter. So ammeter is attached in series and it is used to measure the electric current. It is used to measure the electric current. Okay, so uh, that's it about the electrical current, but uh, I have to discuss uh, two types of electric currents as well. So you'll uh, you'll discover that there are, you'll discuss like in the later chapters that that there are two types of electrical currents. So types of electrical current types of electrical currents number one oh, I, I'll just write it over here direct current so this type of current is mainly produced by the batteries all types of batteries they produce the direct current no matter it's uh, the inverter battery or the mobile battery or the laptop battery all type of batteries they they produce the direct current and uh, up to some extent the solar panels they also produce the direct current and the other one is the alt alternating current so in our homes we receive the alternating current and usually the source of the alternating current are the generators so any generator no matter it's at the power plant it's at the like it's a wind turbine it's a hydropower plant or you can say it's um, uh, the plant by the uh, by the waves or the normal uh, engine like the normal generator like fuel based generator all type of generators they produce the alternating current and in our household, we also use the alternating current because uh, alternating current is best for the motors. And uh, you know, like the motors are everywhere. The motors, like water motor, motor in the fans, in the air conditioner, like the motors are everywhere. So alternating current is best suitable for the motors. And also it is uh, easy to transfer from one point to another as compared to the direct current. So in our household, we use alternating current and for our portable devices, normally we use the direct current. So these are the two types of currents that you should know. And uh, this is it about the topic from the electric current. All right, so now we have to discuss about the electromotive force and the potential difference. So electromotive force and the potential difference, they are basically almost same with a slight difference. So in this topic, we'll first of all, we'll discuss about that difference. Okay, so for that purpose, I have to draw an electrical circuit. So here's the battery. It is connected with the light bulb. That's the light bulb. That's the negative terminal of the battery. That's the positive terminal of the battery. Now there's a charge that's going to flow from the post. As I told you that the current flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery. Okay. 
Um, in fact, let me just draw two bulbs so it'll be more clear to you. All right, so that's one bulb, bulb number one. Here's another bulb, bulb number two. And the charge flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards all the way towards the negative terminal of the battery. Now, first of all, we will define the electromotive force. So electromotive force is basically, it is the amount of work done that we do on a charge. Let's suppose one charge is starting from this position and it is moving all the way through the circuit. Okay. I repeat, one charge is starting from this positive terminal of the battery and it is moving all the way through bulb number one and bulb number two and reaches the negative term terminal. So the work done that has been done on this positive charge is called the electromotive force. Got it? Now I'll write down its definition. The amount of work done, the amount of work done on a charge on a charge in order to move it throughout the circuit throughout the circuit is called EMF or we can say electromotive force is called electromotive force okay or EMF as a short version. The unit of uh, uh, the formula for the EMF is, I'll write it over here, EMF is equal to work done, since it's work done per unit charge, so we can say work done divided by the charge and symbolically we can write, we represent EMF with V, we represent charge with uh, work done with W and charge with Q. So it will be like, in, in fact, we represent EMF with E, capital E. It's not energy, it's EMF, okay? So EMF is equal to work done per unit charge, or we can say E is equal to W over Q. Now, if we talk about the unit of the EMF, the unit of the EMF is volt. And we represent volt with capital V, okay? Now, um, Volt is basically equal to, if we discuss the volt in, in terms of SI units, so volt itself is equal to joule per coulomb, okay? Why? Because the unit of work done is joule and the unit of charge is coulomb. So we have, uh, we, can uh, we can define the EMF with two units. One is the volt and the other one is joule per coulomb. J over C, okay? But the main idea that you have to keep in mind about the concept of EMF is the amount of work done that will be done on this particular charge in order to move it throughout this whole circuit, okay? That is called the work done, uh, that is called the EMF. Now the next thing and quite similar thing that you have to discuss is about the potential difference. There's a slight difference between the EMF and the potential difference. So for that purpose, I have to erase it all uh, except this circuit. Okay. Now, in order to understand the potential difference, I'll resume my story from here. Now look, this is the charge. It is starting from the positive terminal of the battery. It started from here and moved at this particular point. At this point. Okay. And now, after some time, it moved from this point to this point, okay? So this positive charge has moved through the bulb number one. So the amount of work done that we have to apply on this positive charge in order to move from, let's suppose this is a position A and that is position B, okay? So the amount of work done that we have to do in on this positive charge in order to move from position A towards position, towards position B, is called the potential difference okay now after some time that charge moved over here from this position 
to this one and now the amount of work done that we have to do on to this charge in order to move from this position a towards to this position b that is called the potential difference across bulb number two okay so that's the difference between the emf and the potential difference emf is means the work done in order to move the charge throughout the circuit but potential difference is the amount of work done on the charge just to move it through one electrical component one electrical component so that's the difference between the um, emf and the potential difference now i'm going to write down the definition formula and everything so that um, you can note it down okay the amount of work done the amount of work done per unit charge in order to move it from one point to another to another across a across an electrical component in this case this bulb was electrical component across an electrical component so that amount of work done on electric charge in order to move from one point to another is called the potential difference and we can write it as pd equals to work done divided by the charge or we can we represent potential difference with v so it'll be like v equals to w over q and the unit of course the unit we have like two units one is volt that is most commonly used and the other one is joule per coulomb like everything else is same the only difference is in the definition of the potential difference and the electromotive force okay now we have to discuss about the device about the yeah about the instrument that is used to measure this potential difference so the instrument that is used to measure this to which is used to measure the potential difference across any object is called the voltmeter okay so now we have to discuss about the voltmeter so voltmeter is basically it is the component it is the instrument basically the electrical instrument that is used to measure the potential difference to measure used to measure the potential difference across an object across an object so that's the role of voltmeter and uh, about the like how we can attach the voltmeter in a circuit so basically we attach the voltmeter in parallel so it is attached in parallel in an electrical circuit to measure the uh, potential difference or the voltage voltage is another word for the potential difference we call it potential difference or the voltage so potential difference and voltage are same voltage is just another word for the potential difference so potential difference is same as voltage okay now um we have to check we have to uh, see how we can attach a voltmeter in an electrical uh, circuit to measure its uh, voltage or the potential difference so let me just remove this definition now i'll write it over here so we attach the voltmeter in parallel so this that's the parallel combination that's the voltmeter i represent it with v there you go so that's how we attach the voltmeter with the bulb so that we can measure its uh, potential difference 
Now the next thing that we have to discuss is the EMF or the voltage in a parallel circuit. Uh, parallel circuit or you can say okay let me, let me just draw a parallel circuit so you can understand it properly so for example um, this is the battery this is bulb number one that's bulb number two and that's bulb number three the voltage of this battery or the potential difference of this battery is 12 volts that's bulb number one bulb number two bulb number three now the voltage or the potential difference across this bulb bulb number one bulb number two and bulb number three will be same and that voltage will be equal to 12 volts which means bulb number one will have 12 volts across it bulb number two will have 12 volts across it and bulb number three will have 12 volts across it so we can say that the potential difference or the voltage the voltage or potential difference remains same in series and sorry in parallel sorry pardon in parallel this is the parallel combination okay now let's draw um, a series combination as well so for the series combination, uh, let's suppose we have this battery. This is bulb number one, bulb number two, and bulb number three. Now, one, two, and three. Negative terminal, positive terminal. This battery is of 12 volts. Now, this is the series combination. This is the series combination. Now in the series combination, this 12 volt will be divided among bulb number one, bulb number two, and bulb number three. Okay, so um, four volts will be given to bulb number one, four volts will be given to bulb number two, and four volts will be given to bulb number three. So when you add all of these voltages, they sum up to 12 volts okay so that's how you'll work it out that's that's how you'll see the volt the voltage or the potential difference in parallel and the series combination and let's discuss it a bit further okay for example within the same circuit if you attach uh, a voltmeter for example let's suppose I attach a voltmeter across this bulb so this voltmeter will show me 4 volts and if I attach the voltmeter over here then this voltmeter will show me 12 volts okay so voltmeter is just a device that is used to measure the potential difference across uh, uh, across our electrical component okay so yeah this is it about the electromotive force potential difference and the characteristics of the potential difference or the voltage in series and parallel combination okay so now we have to discuss um, the last subtopic of this topic and that is about the resistance what is a, a resistance so resistance is simply it is resistance is the ratio of potential difference to the current of potential difference to current that is called the resistance so you can say that resistance is equal to potential difference I'll just write it as PD over current that that is simply the resistance and symbolically if i write it it will be like r equals to v over i where v is the symbol for the potential difference i is the symbol for the current and r is the symbol for the resistance as far as the units are concerned so the units of uh, resistance are ohm 
OHM and this is the symbol of the unit of resistance okay and now we have to we have to design an experiment by which we will measure the resistance of an object okay so what we will do is um, I will draw an electrical circuit an electrical circuit this is the battery and I will put a variable resistor I'll let you know what what will it do then I'll put an ammeter and the voltmeter sorry uh, the bulb light bulb and a, this will be connected with the negative terminal of the battery and across it I will attach a voltmeter like that that's the ammeter this is the voltmeter and this is the variable resistor this is the positive terminal of the battery that's the negative term terminal of the battery now I will change I will keep this variable resistor to be maximum so minimum current will pass through this circuit and uh, after that I will check the voltage across the light bulb and then after some time I'll decrease this resistance so more current will pass then I'll decrease it further more current will pass decrease it further more current will pass and in the end I'll note down all the readings of the current and the voltages and from there I'll work out the resistance of this light bulb how I'll show you so what I'll do is I will make a graph over here I'll draw a graph over here where I'll have the current in the x-axis and I will have the voltage in the y-axis okay I'll keep this uh, variable resistor to the max so I'll have minimum current let's put over here so I have zero current and zero voltage I'll decrease I'll decrease this resistance so the current could increase through this ammeter okay and when the current increases the voltage will increase as well okay so when the current increases the voltage increases and I'll get my new position over here then over here then over here then over here and then over here okay so I'll just draw a straight line that joins all the points and then I will find out the slope of this straight line slope means how much is the rise in this line and how much is the run in this line okay so slope is sim simply rise over run for example the voltage increased from 0 volts towards to 20 volts so the rise will be 20 and the current increases from 0 ampere to for example 5 ampere so the run will be 5 when we divide them we will get 4 so 4 is the slope which will give me the resistance so the resistance of this light bulb is 4 ohms do you get it so by this experiment we will find out the resistance of this light bulb now there's a twist and the twist is in this experiment we did not consider the increase in temperature with the increase in current okay so let's come back on to it when you increase the current the voltage will increase across the bulb and uh, of course the current is will also increase across the bulb so when the current increases across the bulb it will increase the temperature of the bulb so when the temperature of the bulb will increase its resistance will increase that will cause to decrease the current so in actual our graph will not be our graph for this this uh, light bulb will not be a straight line it will be a curved graph okay it will look like this so we have current in the x-axis we have the voltage in the y-axis so the voltage will increase but the current will not increase so it will look like this 
something like that or if I switch the position of the voltage and the current then our graph will look like this if I keep voltage in the x-axis current in the y-axis then our graph will look like this there you go so instead of going straight you'll see this curve in this graph this shows that with the increase in current the temperature increases and when the temperature increases resistance increases and when the resistance increases the current will not flow according um, the current will not be directly proportional to the voltage so instead of uh, observing this straight line we will observe this curve which shows that this bulb is not in this bulb the voltage and current are not directly proportional to each other now from here I have to define a law that is called the Ohm's law okay so let's define let's come on to the Ohm's law so Ohm's law is the basic is the most basic law in the circuits Ohm's law states that the current through a conductor is directly proportional to the voltage through a conductor is directly proportional to the voltage okay so I can uh, and inversely proportional to the resistance inversely proportional to the resistance which means that I can write it as like this I is directly proportional to V but I is inversely proportional to R and when I'll combine it it will look like I is proportional to V over R or I can simply write it as I equals to V over R or V is equal to I R so this is basically the Ohm's law now in this case of bulb since the current and voltages are not directly proportional so we'll say that this bulb is a non ohmic conductor why because it is not following the Ohm's law in place of this bulb if we replace this bulb with a resistor a resistor is basically an electrical component that has a fixed resistance and it is not affected by the temperature okay so that's a resistor it is an electrical component that controls the flow of the current and its resistance is fixed and it is not affected by the temperature so for this resistor we'll observe such a graph a straight line when we increase the current the voltage increases when we further increase the current the voltage increases further so we can say that this resistor is following the Ohm's law because as you increase the voltage the current increases or as you increase the current the voltage increases across the resistor so this resistor will consider to be an ohmic conductor because it follows the Ohm's law ohmic conductor why because it obeys the Ohm's law so this is it that you have to understand about the resistance its formula its units Ohm's law uh, ohmic conductors non ohmic conductors the effect of temperature on the filament bulb and why it's not an ohmic conductor if you have any question just comment below just mention the exact time in the video uh, in the comment section and I'll try to answer all of your question as soon as possible thanks a lot um, keep working hard and stay blessed